Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. So today's video is supposed to be putting the heads on, the rockers, the push rods, and showing you how to tighten all that stuff up. But we had a slight issue. Push rods were not long enough and I had to get new ones. So before I get new ones, I have to measure them and make sure I get the right ones this time because I ordered these back in September of 2023 and I cannot return them. Sucks to be me, oh well. So in lieu of that, which will be a video a little further down the road, but we're gonna work on some other things before we drop that one. Gotta get the timing chain cover on. And also gonna pull the rear seal and the rear plate. And I'm gonna show you about that. And also I have one of these there, improved racing oil diverters, AKA the barbell. So I'm going to show you how to line all that up and get that installed and also while we're at it. Might as well put on the oil pan which is buried under here. Just some the crap gets in there, but hi. Get everything cleaned up because there's nothing fun to watch about that. And then uh, I'll catch up with you when we start putting this stuff back on. All right guys, first thing we gotta do before we put this on is we're gonna knock the old crank seal out, which is right there and what I found is just lay a piece of wood down just get on either side of this and then we're gonna hit it from the back and pull it out now when this is on the engine and you're trying to change it I've heard a couple things like you get a hook back there and pull it out or put a screw through it which I think is sketch but those are things that I heard you could do but I prefer to have it out of the engine I clean this thing up it's gonna be going for paint after I get this out so the next time you see it after this thing comes out. This is gonna be black. I decided to paint this black, so that's gonna happen. So there we go, all set up. And with this, just take a screwdriver and a hammer. I'm using a rubber one for some reason, but basically stick it right inside, give it a tap. Maybe move to this side, give it a tap. There it goes. I didn't want it, but there you go. There's our uh, crank seal. So I have a new one. I actually have two new ones. But we're gonna eat this, you And also another thing to remember is clean out inside of here where the seal goes. As you can see, there's, maybe you could see. Yeah, you can probably see it. There's a little residue in there, like the little rust looking stuff. Even though there's aluminum, it doesn't rust. Clean that off. And then I'm gonna get this thing ready for paint and we're gonna freaking go to town. All right guys, we're ready to put on the front timing chain cover and I have this little installation kit. So you got this little bracket underneath right here that is held in by two six millimeter hex screws. And basically you put the cover on and then when you have the cover on without the seal installed, you stick this on to line it up so it's nice and flush down here and it's centered on the crankshaft, this crankshaft extension. So I'm gonna go up and get it. I got the bolts cleaned up, they're right there. Ooh, fancy, nothing fancy, just clean. And the surface is all clean, so we're gonna go ahead and install it. We got the gasket, and then we'll put the plate on, and then I'll show you how to do this whole little process. All right, guys, here's my new freshly painted front cover. Not necessary to paint it, but I did. Now there's only one way to put this gasket on and as you can see right here, there's this little little wow in there. So you just want that to line up with that. If you do it the other way, I think all the bolts line up, but I don't know if it'll seal right. So just do it this way. And I'm just gonna put it on, get a bolt started and start a couple of them just to hold it in place. And then we will continue on. Okay, so I'll just get a couple of these started. All right guys, got all the bolts up here started. They're not pressing against the block yet. And then I got this little tool in here. So there it goes. That just made solid contact. I just pushed it in. So now this cover is centered on the crankshaft. So now we can start just snugging these up. And you have two bottom bolts too you can use. So yeah, you know what, I'm gonna throw them in. I'll throw them in just to have them. 
So yeah, just snug these up until they're making contact with the block. So there we go. So that one's just snugged up. We're gonna torque it later. So that one's just started. Okay, so all these bolts are snugged in place. As you can see, it's flat on the bottom and we have no gaps, so that's good. These just get tightened down to 18 foot-pounds of torque, no big deal. So we'll torque it down, then we'll remove this, and then we'll install our, our crank seal. And we can move on to the back of the engine and get that all taken apart and get it aligned. All right guys, torque wrench down to 18 foot-pounds. And we're just going to tighten these guys up. Don't even bother at the bottom because you're going to be taking that off because you got an oil pan on there. So here we go. I'll set the 18 foot pounds. All right, now I got to struggle and get this thing out because it is pretty tight in there. So let's see if we could uh, get a little wiggle in there. There it goes. Anyway, we got this little thing off. I'm going to leave the plate on for now until I'm ready for it, so no big deal. Just leave it. All right, guys, now it's time to put the oil seal in. So what I like to do is put a little, uh, little gasket sealer in here just in case some oil sneaks by. You kind of trap it in there in this little ring here. I'm going to do that real quick, and then we'll start putting the seal in, which also this thing helps because you can turn it around and smash it on flat. So you could just hammer it and ram it in, like I did on your mom last night. All right guys, as you can see, I put the red RTV in there. And here's our new seal right here. So let's see if it comes up on camera. So if you see these little tabs or these little dots, those go on the outside. And you want the ring, it's kind of got a ring around it. You want that on the inside. So get this thing started line it up so what you do is you take this thing turn it around boop and you square it up make it nice and square and then just give it a couple love taps with a hammer let's see how we look so we're not in down there so just gotta get it a little more down here let's see what we got go a little more there so we're almost there it's just this side All right, a couple of whacks of the hammer, just make sure it's flush. So just give it a little feel check, make sure it's flush. It's sticking out down there a little bit. Put a little taps. That's better. So now we're in there all flush. Love it. All right, and then just get a rag, clean that up a little bit if you want. That's what I'm going to do. So that's it for this side. All right, guys, we're on to the back cover of the engine. These are all 10 millimeter bolts. There's like 60 of them. Not really, but probably the same amount as the front, maybe like 10. We're gonna use the engine hoist to pick this up, get it airborne, and we can figure it out from there. All right guys, on the back cover, there are one, two, 10, 11, 12 bolts on the back side. So we're gonna pull this off. Got my little Biobi ratchet. Again, not a sponsor, just this thing's awesome. Uh, should be able to tackle this. So we'll bang this out real quick and get all this exposed. The new kit I got comes with the gasket, the plate, and bolts, so we're just gonna go to the new stuff. Since this is on the back of the engine and you don't wanna be digging around back here, we're just gonna get everything new back here. All right, I got something a little more ass here, so hopefully we should be able to just freaking cute. Couple love taps, just like you're spanking your mom. And we are almost out. There we go. All right, cool. So we got this guy out, woo. And then, also part of the objective of getting in here, let me zoom in more. But right there, that's our little uh, oil diverter, AKA the barbell. So we wanted to get to that too. So we're gonna get that out. We're gonna clean up back here a little bit. This is Texas Speed Cam. Woo. So yeah, we're just gonna clean it up, get that out. Like I said, I got the new barbell right here. This one's aluminum, that one's plastic trash. Change it while we're in there. So yeah, let me uh, clean this up and then we'll do our thing. 
All right, guys, on this little oil galley diverter thing, AKA the barbell, I'm gonna use a little pick and see if I can just pick that thing out. So hopefully that works. Cause there's really not much to grab onto with that. Yeah, there you go. Kind of stick it in and pry and it starts coming out slowly but surely. Just try not to gouge the block. There we go. There we go. Now I gotta loop it out. All right, just up to the O-ring. And there's our little barbell. Oh, cute little guy. So let me make sure there's nothing in there. No. Okay, cool. So this is trash. All right, so right here we got our new improved racing aluminum one that goes in and it's gonna go in just like that. So you're gonna stick this long tippy end in there, just like I was sticking your mom. But first we're gonna lube it up with a little oil, get these O-rings lubed up, and we're gonna install it. And if you look in the back, there's like a little screw. So if you can figure out what size screw that is, get one handy. So if you ever have to replace this, you can just screw it right in, pull it out. Not gonna go too crazy with the oil, just enough. Let's see if we get this started, and then I'll do the back side. Ooh, that's tight. There we go. I'll get a little back here. A little on my finger. Now I don't know how much, you know, if you could tap it in with something, if it does get stuck. I have heard these things are pretty tight tolerances, but we'll check it out and see what we got. So get in there. Oop, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it went pretty easy. Probably give it a love tap with something real quick. A little rubber mallet. There we go. So our little oil diverter is installed. It stopped right there. So that should be good enough for what we need to do. Now I cleaned the gasket surfaces off and I made a mistake. I should have cleaned the whole back of the engine before I removed that. Oh well, so we're gonna have to do it after we install the new one. So stand by, let me get that ready. All right guys, got my new plate. It comes with a gasket and new bolts, so. I just lubed this up with a little bit of oil and also got rid of some debris that was on there from when I was spraying before. So make sure that's clean so you don't have any issues in the future. So we're just gonna lay this in here. So you're started, we'll get you pushed in there, I guess. All right guys, so I had to use this. So it was a little tough getting these in and trying to get this seated. So yeah, it's a good idea to put oil on there. And uh, also the little alignment tool I have, since this already had the seal in it, there's no holes on the bottom to put that little bracket in, but it's very flush with the bottom of the block. So I can't complain. Yeah, this is a Dorman kit. These are 12 millimeter bolts. They're replacing the 10 millimeter ones. Uh, as per the directions, Let's see, tighten rear housing, 22 foot pounds. So that's what the directions say with it. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go 22 foot pounds. And then we can move on to the oil pan. Okay, 22 foot pounds. Hopefully this does not uh, rock the engine. All right guys, laid the gasket on and uh, there's only one way to do it, so. Where the uh, oil diverter is down there, the little barbell, that's gonna be right up here. That's where that goes, obviously. And uh, I just installed two rivets, just one there and one here, respectively there and here. So the original one came with that. So just to give you the size of that, I used the eighth inch by five eighths. So this long guy, and what I did was, I should have recorded it, but basically, you would drop it down just this fat end. You're gonna drop it down just like that, and you're gonna pull this skinny end up, and then eventually it breaks off. And let's see if I can get underneath. So yeah, right there. You can see where it broke off, right by my finger. So yeah, we're uh, we're ready to slap this thing up in there and get it started. Now just one thing real quick. Uh, I don't know who does this or if anybody does this, but what I like to do is I like to use the RTV, especially right here, 
And same thing on the front cover. Just right where that little crease is and on this side, same thing. That's the only place I really like to use it because that is probably the biggest failure point when you go to install this. So that's what I'm going to do. You don't have to do it. That's just the way I do it. Also, make sure your surfaces are all clean. Like this one's got a little bit of oil on it. We're going to clean that up. And we'll wrap this video up as soon as we get that pan on. All right, guys. Got my little globs of our TV on my corners that I want. And now we're going to slap this bad boy in. Now, this gasket's pretty good. Uh, you can slide a couple bolts up. I just put four up and I'm just going to get them started. And then once I get them started, I'll load up the other ones. And then I'll go over another very important thing you got to do. But we'll do that at the very end once we get all the bolts started. There, it's this way it goes. Yep. That lines up. Beautiful. Okay. Alright, I got those four bolts started. Went in pretty painlessly, so I'm going to start putting in the rest of them, and then I'm going to go over what you need to do at the back end of the engine. Alright guys, got all the bolts started, still have a little gap there. Now for the important information. I don't know if you know this, but the bell housing attaches to the oil pan here and here. It is crucial that you get it very flush right here and right here because if you don't there's a good chance that this could crack and not necessarily just here it could crack the pan somewhere else you do not want that so I'm going to snug these down and get them as close as I can to where I want them and then I could stick either stick the bell housing on which I just got right over there no big deal or just take a straight edge and just lay it flat there make sure it doesn't rock side to side same thing here it doesn't rock side to side that is the most critical part of doing this besides putting a gasket on because if you don't have a gasket you have issues if this isn't lined up you really have issues and then you're doing this all over again let me snug these down and get them close enough to where i want it and then i'm going to throw the bell housing on and the straight i'm going to do the straight edge and then throw the bell housing on just to uh make sure we are gucci all right guys i snug down the bolts but just loose enough to uh a lot of little play with this if I need it. So, like I was saying before, you take a straight edge here, and this one has a little movement. This one has a little movement there. This one's got a lot more. So the, oil, the pan's gonna have to go forward. Now, I don't know if I could put the bell housing on and start those, and start a couple of these just to snug it up, but I'm gonna give that a go, so. Let's see what that gets us. I just don't know if these will line up. That's the only problem. Oh well, we'll, uh, we'll play with it. All right guys, I slapped on the bell housing and bolted it up down here, put a couple bolts up top. You get the deal. So this thing has no choice, as in the oil pan has no choice, but to be flush with the block, the bell housing, and the oil pan. So. I just snug these up and snug the bottom and the front, snug them all up. Now we're gonna get to torquing them and I'm gonna leave that on while we torque them so we don't jack up anything. And then we will remove the bell housing and we should be all Gucci and good to go. All right guys, we got everything in place. So we're gonna start torquing these down. Now these main ones that, go, that start from this side and wrap around to the other side, those are gonna be 18 foot pounds. And then there's two little ones, you probably see it right there. There's one here and one here. They're the very long skinny ones. They're like 106 inch pounds. So I would just snug them to where you see fit. So let's begin to work these, get this done. We get the bell housing back off and all that fun stuff, get it back on an engine stand. And uh, we'll wrap up the video after that. Oh, and also, I don't know if there's a torque sequence to this. I've never heard of it, but I like starting from the back, front, front, back. Kind of like you're doing the, the head gasket, only because this thing's so big. So we'll run with that. All right, guys, right now I'm having a lot of trust issues with my torque wrench because it seems to be going a little too far and I don't want to push it. These things will snap very easily. Ask me how I know. So, I'm going to go by feel. 
But I'm still gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start back here, go forward, back, and you get the idea. So I already started with that one, start with that one. I'm gonna hit the front here. All right, guys, that about does it. We're, uh, we're all lined up. We should be flush down there and up here. Well, at the, up here doesn't matter. Well, I guess it all does matter. But got a rear cover on, a rear seal in, our little uh, barbells in, oil pans on. We're all snugged up all around. I just double checked everything. Don't forget your front two bolts there. And this side's all good to go. All right, so uh, that about does it for this video. Uh, next video, being that this one was supposed to be the heads and the rocker arms and push rods going in, and there was a slight dilemma with that. So my next video, I'm going to show you how to properly measure for the right push rods because I did not. And I'll explain more in that video about where Texas Speed got this measurement because I can't blame them entirely. Like, it, it'll make sense when I explain it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. Uh, I believe this is gonna be my 32nd video, Jesus Christ. So yeah, a lot more than I wanted to actually do, but whatever. But yeah, we're looking good. And like I said, ignore that for now. And I'll, I'll show you how to, to measure push rods in the next video. And uh, got plenty more content coming up. Got a brake master cylinder that needs to go in. I may or may not have gotten a line lock. So who doesn't like standing burnouts? Raise your hand. Yeah, and then uh, I got the clutch system that's got to go in and uh, all that fun stuff. So we're getting there, guys. I promise. It's just work, life, weddings. I, I, weddings, it's been raining for the past week here. So, you know, boo-hoo me. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Leave comments. Got questions. I got maybe answers. So till next time, I'll see you in the next one.